Hi, everybody. My name is Sue Supriano, and my guest today is Dr. Neil Cherry. Dr. Cherry is from New Zealand. He has a doctorate in physics. That's where the doctor comes from, and he's done so many things I just uh, don't even know where to start. Uh, he has gotten a couple of prizes for disar uh, services to peace and disarmament research and education and for defending the honesty of science that um, the latter one for defending the honesty of science was just in this year, 2001. And Dr. Cherry works with meteorology, radio frequency, agriculture, land and water resources, wind energy, climate research, electromagnetic radiation, and um, the health effects of all these things, and just on and on. I, as I was saying, Dr. Cherry, I don't know. And you said that you have a consultant company, and you're an elected official in New Zealand where you live. Incredible. And now you're right passing through um, the Bay Area here. Yes, well, I was invited to uh, an annual Italian Congress on the health effects of electromagnetic radiation, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to come to the Bay Area, and then I'm going up to Seattle, then I'm my visiting my daughter in England, mm -hmm. visiting laboratories and universities in Europe, and going to this Congress. Mm -hmm. And actually, you've also written about and done research on the Sutro Tower right here in San Francisco. So we're going to be talking about that. I, I just don't even know where to start. I, the whole issue of um, electromagnetic radiation is uh, something that one of, one of the many things that people don't seem to be wanting to really face, and they get a lot of information from the companies that put out the that, that make money from this from the uh, microwave um, devices. I don't know too much about this, so I know you've done, you have lots and lots of evidence. Let's just since we live in San Francisco here, let's just start with, since I live in in the Bay Area. Let's start with that, the Sutro Tower. Yes, well, there's been a lot of community concern about the Sutro Tower for a long time in terms of the health effects, and the um, city health department did a study. Well, excuse me, I'm just going to inter interrupt you and say the Sutro Tower is a big, huge, huge, huge radio tower in San Francisco. It's not just radio, but also TV. It's got over three, 30 megawatts of radio frequency output. So it's a massive system with most of the radio and TV for San Francisco comes from a single source. Mm -hmm. And so if there are any effects from it, then it's uh, focused on that source. So it's focused largely towards the main area of downtown and to Oakland and Berkeley on the other side. There's very little going to the west because it's just one little suburb there. Mm -hmm. And so, as I mentioned, the city health department did a study and they found a doubling or more doubling of the childhood cancer in just to the east of, of the, the tower in the uh, Maui Valley uh, area. And so I thought I would uh, carry out a study of the spatial distribution of cancer and I looked at a study done in Britain around radio and TV towers there, and that seemed to me to follow the radiation patterns because using my physics background, I looked at the way that the radiation comes out from the tower and is focused at various points. And so it goes not through a, a single line, but it goes up and down. Mm -hmm. And so it gives us a good opportunity that if the cancer rates go up and down as you go out from the tower and match the radiation, very strongly causal. And so I obtained an environmental impact report which had information about the radiation patterns and I obtained the cancer, childhood cancer data from a published paper and they match. I did three studies. I said within a kilometre of the tower, out to about 4.5 kilometres and outside 4.5 kilometres, what are the cancer rates? And from outside, low, middle, high for all these childhood cancers. And then I said, what about this, this undulating pattern that was measured and uh, theoretically shown and it goes up and down with the pattern perfectly. And I said, well, let's say we don't know what the pattern really is and start eight kilometres away and see if the cancer just keeps on increasing the closer to the tower you get, and it does. So three totally independent analyses all point to the hypothesis that these signals produce cancer in residential levels of exposure. Mm -hmm. That was the hypothesis behind the paper. And it's backed up by at least six other studies. Around the Vatican radio tower in Rome, there is a decrease in cancer as you go away from the tower for adult cancer and childhood cancer. And the same thing in the UK, and also there was a study done in Australia. So 
it's, it's quite strong evidence that these things are carcinogenic. Now, if it's carcinogenic, what is causing the cancer is what questions I asked. What is the mechanism? And so I did the search in the literature and I found there were dozens of studies showing chromosome damage. And chromosome damage means DNA damage because chromosomes are built out of DNA. And now we have got the research from America and from Europe showing DNA damage from microwaves and radio waves. And I was surprised to find the first paper showing chromosome damage from radio frequency signals was published in 1959. Mm -hmm. And recently in a court case, I was giving evidence for a police officer who had a radar exposing his head for years and because of brain tumour on that side of his head. And the state attorney general opposing my position said that Dr. Cherry's position that these things cause chromosome damage and DNA damage is a novel position. And the attorney on my side said, well, we've known it since 1959, so it's not novel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, that's what I was surprised. I'm uh, what I call a magpie, <laughs> that I collect all this information and I put it together mm -hmm. and try and build the whole picture to see how it, it fits together. Mm -hmm. Well, and clearly if that information is true about here, it's true about, ra about these kinds of towers all over the world. So why don't uh, we know this? Well, because government officials, in the Western world particularly, and uh, the companies and the military, all don't want to accept this evidence because uh, that would then mean that radars are a problem, that military systems are a problem, that workers in these areas might get cancer or might get uh, heart, heart attacks or all that kind of stuff, and that the population uh, cancer rates must be associated with something else not the cell phones, not the radio towers, not the TV towers, not the media that's giving all the information. So you can see the conflict of interest here. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really annoys me most, because I'm an independent academic that reaches out to look at the scientific research and pulls it in, and uh, I'm on the standards committee in New Zealand, but it's dominated by people who take the telecom position, including government officials who appear in court for telecom. And that happens all around the world, and particularly the Western world. And so the public health protection isn't based on epidemiology, which is the studies of public health. Mm -hmm. It's based on the assumption that the only thing that these things can cause is heat. Because after the war, all these radars and radios were used, and they said, oh, we know they heat people. So let's avoid heat. And then the uh, work on ionizing radiation from nuclear powers and nuclear bombs, things like that. There was a big argument for many years about does that cause cancer or just the blast in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, was it just flying glass and falling buildings that caused the problem? And we found that it caused cancer. And they said, why does it cause cancer? Because it is causing ionizing radiation ionizes things in the body and the free radicals that are formed by ionizing damage the DNA, therefore it can cause cancer. Now, therefore ionizing radiation causes cancer. If it's non-ionizing, it can't cause cancer. But chemicals aren't ionizing and they cause cancer mm -hmm. by interfering with cells, by damaging the DNA. And so I've discovered that the body is full of electromagnetic